Hello, my name's Professor Georgina Long. I'm co-medical director of Melanoma Institute Australia and the University of Sydney. I'm also a medical oncologist and translational researcher. A medical oncologist treats cancer with drug therapy. Today, we will be presenting to you a video on the standard management of stage one and two or early melanoma. We will also be presenting information on the anticipated advances in the near future for the management of stage one and two melanoma. The most important thing for you to take home from this video is that your care is multidisciplinary. For example, your general practitioner may be involved, a dermatologist, a surgical oncologist or plastic surgeon, a medical oncologist or radiation oncologist. A surgeon treats cancer by excision, by removing it with a knife or scalpel. A radiation oncologist treats cancer with ray beams and a medical oncologist treats cancer with drug therapy. Another very important doctor who is part of your multidisciplinary care is the pathologist. They take the biopsies taken by your team and diagnose melanoma. They are critical to inform the management of your melanoma. Sometimes you will also have a surgical nurse looking after you or a nurse from the medical oncology team. But the most important thing is that for the best management of melanoma, your care is multidisciplinary. I will also be joined by my colleague, Tom Pennington. Hello, I'm Dr. Tom Pennington. I'm a melanoma surgeon with Melanoma Institute Australia. Early stage melanoma is melanoma that is confined to the site of origin or where it began and hasn't shown any signs of spread uh, to another site such as lymph nodes or other organs. Usually melanoma arises in the skin, in particular the first or the outer layer of the skin, the epidermis, and grows downwards into the dermis and sometimes underneath the skin before it spreads to other sites. Early stage melanoma is melanoma that has not spread yet. You may have already received a pathology report. A pathology report is a summary of those microscopic features as assessed by an expert pathologist. It involves assessment of various aspects of the tumour itself, including the thickness of the melanoma, which is very important, whether or not the melanoma is ulcerated, and uh, the number of cells the pathologist can count under the microscope that are dividing, and that's called the mitotic rate. All of those features give us a sense of the aggressiveness of the melanoma and the risk of that melanoma spreading and causing problems. We often have patients arrive confused about their stage and it's often a confusion regarding the Clark level. Clark level refers to the depth of invasion of your melanoma into the dermis. It is very separate from the overall stage of your melanoma which requires an assessment of not just the thickness of the melanoma, but whether or not it has spread to lymph nodes or to other organs. The Clark level just refers to the thickness and the amount it has spread downwards into the deeper part of the skin. In order to accurately stage your melanoma, it requires an assessment not just of the primary site, but in appropriately selected patients, an assessment of the lymph node field, which drains that site, and whether there's any signs of melanoma in the lymph nodes, and whether there's any signs of melanoma in a distant organ. Lymph nodes are these grape-like structures that sit all around the body, through the neck, in the armpits, in your elbows, behind your knees, throughout all the chest and the abdomen, and they are the fighter system for our body. They fight off viruses, bacteria, but they are also a place that cancer likes to spread.
You have likely had an initial excision biopsy or a different type of biopsy of your melanoma and the next step in treatment involves a wider margin. The point of the wider excision is to take not just the melanoma itself but a cuff of otherwise normal skin surrounding the melanoma and some deeper tissue, usually fat, down to the deeper layers underneath the skin in order to uh, gain control. We know that uh, without the wider excision, the risk of your melanoma growing back at the site is fairly high. So a wider excision involves taking usually a one centimetre and sometimes a two centimetre margin, depending on the characteristics of the melanoma, and closing the defect either with a primary closure, a skin graft or a flap. After your melanoma is widely excised, it is sent to the pathologist to be further examined. You will then get a report in some ways similar to the report you had for the excision biopsy, but this time the more important features are whether or not the melanoma has been completely removed and if it has been completely removed, what kind of clearance do we have in terms of the margins. That will then determine whether or not you need any further treatment to the primary site. The good news is with stage 1 and 2 melanoma, after complete surgical excision, it's got a low risk of spreading, but it still does have a risk. For example, for stage 1 melanoma, approximately 5-10% to of cases will recur, meaning the melanoma can come back where you originally had it or in the nearby lymph nodes and sometimes in distant sites. For stage 2 melanoma, that range is from 10 to 30%. So why does a recurrence happen? What we think happens is that a melanoma cancer cell escapes very early on and over time starts to establish itself either in the nearby area or at distant sites like the lung or the bone. So when we're managing your early primary melanoma, we like to know whether it has spread to nearby lymph nodes in microscopic amounts. To do this, your surgeon may discuss with you the sentinel lymph node biopsy procedure. This allows us to determine whether a melanoma cancer cell has escaped from your primary melanoma and gone to the nearby lymph nodes. For example, if you have a melanoma on your arm and it's spread to the lymph nodes under your arm. If melanoma has spread to the nearby lymph nodes, that puts you in a different risk category in terms of the chance of the melanoma coming back down the track and it also means that you have stage 3 melanoma because there's cancer in the lymph nodes. You may have had a discussion or will be having a discussion with your surgeon about how you know whether it's spread to nearby lymph nodes. The sentinel lymph node biopsy technique is one method by which the surgeons assess whether your melanoma has spread to the nearby lymph nodes. Some melanomas are so thin that we know the risk of it spreading is so low that your surgeon will not recommend this procedure. The surgeon will discuss with you the procedure and tell you what the risk of it spreading and whether to do the procedure using the Sentinel Lymph Node Biopsy Risk Calculator, which can be found on melanomarisk.org.au. A Sentinel Lymph Node Biopsy involves firstly mapping out where the first lymph node or group of lymph nodes are that drains the precise area where your melanoma is. This involves a test which is performed shortly before your surgery called a lymphocintogram. A lymphocintogram involves an injection of a radioactive tracer into the skin adjacent to your melanoma. This tracer then gets taken up into the lymphatic channels and travels to the first lymph node that drains that precise area. Once the lymph node is identified, your surgeon can then remove it 
through a small incision at the same time as performing the wider excision and send it for pathology to determine whether there are any melanoma cells in that sentinel node. In addition to the lymphosintogram, your surgeon will likely inject a blue dye into the same area of the skin while you're asleep. And this blue dye also travels to the sentinel node and dyes that sentinel node blue. It allows us to confidently remove the correct lymph node and the surgeon will be looking for a lymph node that is both blue and hot using a gamma probe. A sentinel lymph node biopsy involves surgically removing the first lymph node or group of lymph nodes that drain the precise area of your skin where the melanoma began. If your sentinel lymph node comes back positive, that places you in stage three, which means melanoma has spread to the lymph nodes. Until very recently, we were recommending further surgery to remove the remaining lymph nodes for patients with uh, stage three. However, there was a very large multinational study that uh, published recently, which showed no survival advantage to that surgery. And given that we now have very good systemic treatment options available for melanoma that has spread, we now no longer recommend the bigger surgery. If your sentinel lymph node comes back negative, that indicates that there are currently no signs that your melanoma has spread. That certainly reduces the risk of the melanoma coming back. However, it doesn't completely eliminate that risk. For some people, the melanoma spreads not via the lymphatics, but via the bloodstream to other sites. And that risk is determined by the thickness of the melanoma. When drug therapy is used after surgery, we call that adjuvant drug therapy. This is not a routine standard treatment for stage one or two melanoma, but is for resected stage three melanoma or stage four melanoma. For stage one and two melanoma, the mainstay of treatment is surgical excision of the primary melanoma with or without a sentinel lymph node biopsy procedure. Occasionally, you may need radiotherapy to the primary site, although that is a very rare requirement. Drug therapy is routinely used in stage three and stage four melanoma, but not at present for stage one and two melanoma. The drug therapies typically used in melanoma are targeted drug therapies aimed at an abnormality in the melanoma cancer cells called the BRAF mutation or immunotherapy. But these are not routinely used for stage one or two melanoma. However, we do have drug trials for stage two melanoma using these drug therapies to try and reduce the chance of the melanoma recurring. And these drug trials are because we've seen such success in stage three and four melanoma with these drug treatments. Once your stage one or two melanoma has been completely surgically excised and treatment is completed, you then undergo active surveillance. The role of active surveillance is to look for recurrence from your melanoma and also to look for new primary melanomas. Once you've had one primary melanoma, you are at risk of a second or even third primary melanoma. You can look your risk up with the risk calculator found at melanomarisk.org.au and look for the calculator for subsequent primary melanomas. Therefore, it's very important you have regular skin checks with either your general practitioner or a dermatologist, and also see your surgical oncologist regularly. For very high risk stage two patients, that is stage two B and stage two C, 
You will also have regular scans to look for recurrence of your melanoma. These will be discussed with you by your melanoma team. It is also very important that you protect yourself from the sun. We know that seeking shade, wearing a hat, sunglasses and clothing are very effective, as well as sunscreen. The important thing is know the skin you're in and check your own skin for anything that's changing rapidly and seek help from your medical team if you do notice something changing. If your melanoma recurs, your treating melanoma team and multidisciplinary team will look at the specific case and decide what the next best steps are. It may be further surgery, it may be radiotherapy, and it may be drug therapy, depending on how your melanoma has recurred. At Melanoma Institute Australia, we are aiming for zero deaths from melanoma. And the best way to achieve zero deaths is in clinical trials, either in the prevention of melanoma, for surgical techniques in melanoma, and drug therapies. The best thing anybody can do to help their treatment work is adopt a healthy lifestyle. And this is something we say for any disease in medicine. So a diet or a Mediterranean diet high in vegetables. You can seek assistance from a dietitian if you have specific concerns. Exercise regularly and have as much sleep as your body needs. If you have further questions or require further resources, talk to your melanoma multidisciplinary team. You can also find more information on melanoma.org.au. We hope this video has been helpful.